Good day, my friends. May you all be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus. You who believe, you who trust in His Word, you believe in His Word, and you seek to obey it. May you be blessed. Because the blessing of God is for everyone. But not everyone, not everyone, is willing to pay the price for it. You can verify. God, in order to give the world a chance to be saved, He sent His Son. He sacrificed His own Son. So do you think that in order for a person or all to obtain the salvation Jesus promises if it's free, or does a person simply believe in the Word of God or believe in God that it's enough? Of course not. If it were like this, there would be no problem. I would have no problem because I serve God throughout my life all my life has been to serve God. So I should already be in a much more intimate level and reach His blessings naturally. But no, we know that sacrifice needs to be constant every single day. In order for me to live, I need to inspire and aspire, transpire. I need the oxygen to inhale and exhale. It's a constant work for my life. And for my salvation, it is no different. I need to be permanently fighting against the spiritual forces of evil, which work in this horrible world and I need to be overcoming in order for me to be approved and then take possession of the crown of life. But not everybody is willing to sacrifice. And you verify through the testimonies we often play that Sacrifice is in, inherent with sacrifice. No one conquers anything in this life without sacrifice. Even the criminals, the corrupt ones, they sacrifice themselves to conquer, although in a fraudulent manner, but they have to sacrifice. Jesus teaches this in another way. Look at the Holy Scripture. Yesterday we read the Scripture written by Matthew the Evangelist, and now we find Luke the Evangelist. It reads, the words of the Lord Jesus, for whoever desires to save his life, whoever desires to save his life, which means to conquer, to take possession of blessings or of the things of this world and conquer the world, will lose his life, will lose. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, for my sake, will save it. So, for you, for me, for us, to conquer, to obtain the life Jesus paid on the cross and Calvary, which is salvation, I need to lose my life. I need to give up my life. And it's a fact. No one can have a new life and maintain the old one. It can't be. So either you keep the old life, you continue with the old life, or you give up the old life, you give it spoiled, rotten, which has been trash, you place it on the altar and you will receive a new life. But it's like this, it's all for all. As a matter of fact, the ones who gain is us because we give to God an unhappy life, an idle life. Is it not true? Sadness, anguish, 
a life of weakness, financial weakness, family weakness, spiritual weakness, defeat, defeat in all sense of the way, my friends. When you place this trash of a life on the altar, but it needs to be 100%, it can't be just a part of this trash of a life. It has to be 100%. When you place your life, your future, everything, your personal projects, what you are, what you have, what you plan to have or be, it doesn't matter. You place your father, mother, children, you place everything. And you make the Lord Jesus Christ the first in your life, then from Him you receive a new spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of creation. You receive a new life. This is the proposal of the campaign of Israel on Mount Sinai life for life, everything for everything. But our everything is always insignificant insignificant before God's all, yes or no? So this is what Jesus is saying. If you would like to gain your life, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, then you will gain it. But in order to lose your life for Jesus, you need to abandon your sins. You need to leave the wrong life you have lived. In summary, you need to change your behavior completely and ethics, spiritual, emotional, in order for you to receive the spirit of glory, the spirit of God, and you begin a new life. And this happens swiftly. From the moment you surrender 100% your life on the altar, from the altar comes the spirit of a new life. You receive a new life. This is the proposal of God. God is a spirit. He's God's spirit. He's true. How can you express a natural faith in a supernatural God? It can't be. It's not possible. This is why Jesus said, whoever wants to win his life shall lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, which means complete surrender, unconditional, he will save it, he'll win it. So I would like you to understand, my friend, that here is this, the secret of the miracle with God. All of us believe in God, but the miracle only takes place with those who sacrifice. But they do not just sacrifice the financial. They sacrifice everything and remain in a complete dependence on God. And if you do not do this, if you do not go with your all on the altar, life for life, all for all, it's best you do not do this. It's best you do not go. Because it's not a game. It's not a gamble, a tryout. It is or is not. Either you believe or not. How will you prove to yourself that you believe? Through the sacrifice. So when there is a true sacrifice, then there is a miracle. 